All right, Professor Cooper here. Um, time for another video. This time I'm going to be introducing you to ggplot and uh, plotting in R. Uh, ggplot2 works a little bit differently from base R, so there are some functions and some, uh, some language that you need to familiarize yourself with. Um, there's some key terms and arguments that you're going to use over and over again. So you might as well get used to it. And we need to talk about them up front. Uh, the first one is the aesthetic. Um, the aesthetic might be the most important thing to learn about ggplot. Then the second is the geom. Um, we will talk about both of them in sequence. So the aesthetic is an argument inside ggplot and it connects every component of your plot that you want to be connected to a variable to that variable. Um, maybe that doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, but um, what I mean to say is um, if you want the color of a line plot or the variation in a bar plot or the size of points in a scatter plot, something like that, to vary based on the values inside a variable rather than for some arbitrary choice, like I want the size of the points to be X or Y, or I want the color of the lines to be red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue are arbitrary choices and they're based on what you think would look good visually. That's one thing. Um, an aesthetic is when the variation in a variable is mapped onto one of the options, um, one of the visual options for the plot, okay? So the best way to talk about this and motivate it is with another example. Um, so I'm going to go back to the MT cars data set. All right. It's okay if you don't know a whole lot about cars because uh, I can explain the basics as we're going through here. So I'm going to talk about the features here. Again, I'm using the piping, right? So I'm starting with the data set and saying from here, I'm going to apply some function to the data set. Piping, you always start with ggplot. And then you get this AES argument that refers to the aesthetic. It gets its own parentheses, as you can see, here and here. So it's just another, it's like another function, but it goes inside the ggplot. It can actually go in the geom level as well, but we'll talk about that later. That's, I don't need to confuse you with that right now. Here I have some potential um, pieces of a plot that can be tied, mapped to a variable. So I want to map the x-axis to the weight variable in MT cars, and I want to map the y-axis to the miles per gallon. Just to show you again, we're going to glimpse the data. And you can see all the names of the variables again, just to remind you. And we're working right now with MPG and weight. So you have this ggplot and then it gets an argument sometimes. So anyway, you have this uh, aesthetic and we are mapping the X axis. We were mapping weight to the X axis and uh, fuel efficiency or miles per gallon to the y-axis. Now, often you won't see this. You might see an argument like this. Those are equivalent. Remember, piping allows you to not turducken a, uh, a particular function so the piping 
allows you to instruct R and then sometimes you can do what I like to do is I'd like to do a placeholder and you can say period comma and that just means um, referencing the most recent object that is being inherited in this case the data set so MT cars ggplot I'm going to put this as a placeholder this period comma then the aesthetics and then once we're inside ggplot we don't pipe anymore we start doing um, addition signs so ggplot plus whatever I'm going to do and you can add line after line after line in this case I'm just going to do geom point and I'm going to talk about geoms in a second uh, geom point is just going to produce a scatter plot and I'm going to show it to you all right so look down here you can see in the plotting window it's very basic it's a little bit ugly but we haven't specified any features like we haven't changed uh, the theme or the background we haven't changed any of the labels we haven't changed any colors there's no title so we don't know anything about this other than and, and, and if somebody were uh, walking up and looking at this um, naively they would have no idea necessarily that we were referring to cars, right? They might be able to figure out that MPG means um, miles per gallon. They might be able to figure out WT equals weight, but you don't wanna leave your labels like that, that's stupid. So um, this is an ugly uh, toy example just to get us started, all right? Back to the geom for a second. The geom, this is where you actually set what kind of plot you're gonna make or what kind of geometric um, layer you're going to put down on the plotting environment. And this could be all sorts of different things. We're gonna talk about a few of them over the course of these videos and the course itself, but there are gonna be plenty more that um, may not be introduced. And there are more every day because packages related to the tidyverse are being published all the time. And so there are going to be lots of geoms that we don't even discuss. All right. But this one is a very basic one, a very straightforward one. Right. Um, so that's what geoms are in a nutshell. Uh, so here's our first plot, right? So let's try a bar plot instead. Now, for a bar plot, what you want to do is take something that's got categories and then you tell it to. Uh, produce a bar plot and it will count up the number of observations in that category. That's sort of a typical thing for a bar plot, right? So we're going to switch up the variable and we're going to count the cylinders, the number of cars that have the different possible amounts of cylinders in the engine. Okay. Uh, so here we start with empty cars. We pipe. We go GG plot, aesthetic, and here we're only putting one aesthetic in X because GM bar actually does the counting for you and produces the Y value itself. Um, this is something unique to GM bar that um, there are other there are other geoms that have different numbers of aesthetics that they require. That's something that I should have discussed maybe a few minutes ago. But geoms, different geoms will have different uh, aesthetic requirements. You will have to specify certain ones. Like you can't do a geom point if you don't specify X and Y. That makes sense because you need two coordinates to lay a point on a coordinate plane, right? Well, in this case, if we're making a bar plot, we only need to know what variable we're counting on. So that's what X is going to be. And in this case, it's going to be cylinders. So we say aesthetic X equals cylinders. And then we do G on bar and then we run it. And it's ugly, but it's a trainer. It's a toy example. So no worries. We'll fix all this later. Um. It looks odd to me, though, because I don't know if you know anything about cars, but cars pretty much only have three possibilities for cylinders. I think they're very rare exceptions. But really, you have four cylinder cars, you have six cylinder cars, and you have eight cylinder cars in this case. So what's weird to me is that this x-axis counts 
3 to 9. It's centered on the right numbers, 4, 6, and 8, but there's really no sense in there being these giant bars, kind of ugly, but more, more to the point, it is putting values on the x-axis that are nonsensical. Now, it's counting correctly, 10, 5, whatever, like we're looking at maybe 14 and maybe 5, let's see, maybe 7, something like that right there for six cylinders. Let's look again at the data set and see if we can figure it out. All right. Now, remember, if you had this as a tibble or if you just use glimpse, glimpse is a good function because it shows you the structure of the data in a very similar way that the str function does. But it also shows you the class of each variable the same way a tibble does. All of these are doubles, which means they're all numeric numbers, which means they're all considered continuous numbers. But the reality is, in this case, cylinder really shouldn't be considered an, a, a double or a numeric. It is, there aren't an infinite number of possible values. It's not internally divisible. Um, you can't go positive and negative numbers, for example. There can't be 7.354 cylinders in an, an engine. So you've got four, you've got six, you've got eight, and that's it. It really should be categorical. So what we need to do is find a way to change the object class of the cylinder variable. Now, I've already been harping on this in previous videos. This is a really good example of it. You really need to pay attention to the object classes that you have because you might get weird, ugly plots like this, and then you don't know why the heck you have them. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to change the cylinder uh, variable to class factor as opposed to the numeric or double. Uh, there are a couple of different ways to do this. You could go into the data set itself and you could either recode cylinder as a factor variable. You could make a copy with the mutate function and make a new, var new variable called cylinder2 or sil2 that is just um, the same exact information just turned into a factor. But given that we're only doing this to visualize it, I can actually do this inside ggplot, believe it or not. So we've got empty cars, we've got pipe. Then we start the ggplot, we have our aesthetics, we have our x, and then gm bar. Right here where we have cylinder, I can literally just wrap a factor function around it, factor command, factor, and give it an extra parentheses. And now it's going to treat it as a factor and not just as a numeric. We can change the width of the bars later, but look at the labeling now down here. Four, six, eight, no other possibilities. It's exactly the way we want it. Um, the label for a cylinder changes a little bit, but that's not a big deal. All right. So that's a, a good trick in your first lesson in see what happens when a variable is of the wrong class and see what happens when you try to visualize it.